In today's video, we are going to be looking at all the art supplies I am taking out to Vietnam, where I'm going to be teaching a 10 day retreat. I'll show you my watercolors, pencils, paint sticks, gouache, and I'll swatch all of them for you. So there is a lot to take in. So hang around. And at the end, I'm going to show you what I take with me in my everyday sketch kit. Hi there, my name's Omar. I'm a sketchbook artist, illustrator and author based in Hertfordshire in the UK and I am going to be showing you an incredible amount of art materials and there is a reason for this. I am teaching in Vietnam at a 10 day retreat and it's because I am going to be leading and I'm going to be sharing uh, various techniques and methods for working with mixed media and watercolour in sketchbooks. I am taking a tremendous amount out there to show my participants. Ordinarily, if I was attending another artist retreat, which I do try to do often, I usually only take hand luggage. Um, it's mainly been in Europe and I have to be mindful of the weight limit. We're talking about eight to 10 kilos. So I have to try and fit the art materials and also sketchbooks within that limit, as well as my clothes, of course. So when you watch this, uh, do remember that uh, this is not what I normally carry around. Before we get on to the swatching proper, I thought it would be good to show you what I'm going to be taking out for each guest at this retreat in Vietnam. I've got a series of postcards that I created from my own sketches and they'll receive, um, I don't know, two or three each. Uh, these were printed by Mu and they are A5 size and um, I just love the quality. I think that's come around again. Um, so they'll receive a postcard each and from the same pieces of artwork I created some stickers um, so um, they'll get one each of these I think or I've probably got two <laughs> loads um, also they'll get one of these quill brushes each because uh, that's the type of brush I love to use and they'll also receive a Hannah Muller cold pressed 100% cotton sketchbook at all my retreats and workshops I always have little gifts for each guest because they've probably spent a lot of time and money getting to these places and I just want to make it really really extra special so I think that's a really nice touch and I'm sure most of my guests appreciate it. The main art supplies I'm taking to Vietnam are in these bags and boxes. I'm also taking my large watercolour set. Uh, it's mainly Winsor & Newton, a bit schminky. And that's for, let's say, studio days where we're not going out anywhere. But I also have a travel version uh, that I filled with my favourite colours. There's 15 colours here. So we've got um, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, Windsor red. Oh, I can't work out what colour that is. I think I've mucked it up a bit. Oh, that looks like permanent rose, opera rose, potter's pink, uh, sap green, olive green. Just testing that out. And the reason I might sound a little bit confused is I often change up some of these colours depending on where I'm about to go. Uh, we also have Burnt Sienna, Windsor Blue, Ultramarine and Payne's Grey. Right, and in here we have got a selection of paint sticks Oh, also wax candles. Gonna do a bit of wax resist out there and some woodies. And we are gonna swatch these out in just a minute. And in here, I have my colored pencils and a few brush pens. Uh, so I've got a mixture of uh, Holbein and also Luminance. And the brush pens that I really love to use are the Curateke Clean Color. And in here, I've got a selection of markers. There are um, Curateke acrylic markers and also Ecoline markers. This is the acrylic gouache, uh, which I will use on the uh, 
to create textured backgrounds in my sketchbooks. Actually, I should show you those sketchbooks next. And in this Kath Kitson box are my watercolours that I, uh, in case I run out, I would panic. <laughs> and underneath are some Neo Colour 2s. Although I do have quite a generous luggage allowance, I, um, I would love to take a lot more sketchbooks than this, but they are incredibly heavy. This is just a selection, and I'm going to quickly show you what's inside these. Uh, this is the, the most recent one that I filled. Uh, it's my little one that I took out on location, and I'll show you um, the bag that I put that in. Uh, this one was from uh, Italy and France last year. Uh, because we are going to be doing a lot of travel type journaling, I thought that would be useful. Also, I'm taking this one out because I think uh, a lot can be gained from working on toned paper. We can learn a lot about contrast and also negative space. This one, um, oh, it's my most, it's the one that I'm filling up right now. It's like my, my sunset one. Um, this is my Burma one. Uh, this is actually uh, a separate YouTube video, uh, a, to a flip through, and I'll give you a link to that. Uh, this is another tonal sketchbook. This is by Hannah Muller. Uh, all of these are by Hannah Muller, by the way. And I was thinking um, maybe we could do some portraits. I'm not sure. Uh, it depends how the group feels. Uh, this is my Singapore sketchbook. I've got this feeling that I haven't. Uh, done a sketchbook tour of this one on YouTube, uh, so maybe I should do that soon. Oh, these are my children, by the way, eating lunch. Uh, this one, I think, is also a, a one that I'm working on right now, which has started off as landscapes, but then um, progressed onto <laughs> sunsets again. I'm, I'm really obsessed with sunsets. I got given this sketchbook by Emma Carlyle at her France retreat last year. It's by uh, Royal Talons. And one of the first things she got us to do, uh, bearing in mind I'm not as familiar with mixed media as I am with watercolour, was for uh, us to just try out all the mixed media, making random marks, random scribbles like this, so that we just got really used to seeing how they behave. So putting water on them, layering on on top of each other and it got to a point where we had to start sort of looking at the colours that we were drawn to and to pick a palette and uh, I've just seen a video uh, where Emma, Carlisle, Sarah, Dyer and also Frances Ives uh, were packing to go to the Bologna Children's Book Fair and I just thought wow, yeah, I should do that with what I'm taking as well, see what happens. And it's, it's not a very difficult concept. You literally just swatch every colour going and you just put them in random places. So this is what I'm going to do now and let's see what happens. This is a Hannah Muller watercolour sketchbook. It's A4 size. Um, I have filled up most of it, but I'll probably take it to Vietnam because I've got... Um, a fair few pages that I would like to um, finish off this sketchbook and um, I'm just going to swatch on the front cover. Uh, this is hard but it doesn't matter because we're only swatching so um, as we did um, at Emma's retreat we just took random materials and just put them next to each other. So let me take these watercolours out and have those neo colours underneath. So I'll start with these. I'm just going to put this on my finger. And let's see what happens if we put a bit of pink next to it. Oh, that's jolly nice. Just wait. Oh, <laughs> I think I still had a bit of watercolour on my finger. Um, and all we're doing is just putting things next to each other, uh, seeing what happens combinations are made, if you can see any patterns emerging. Oh, that, I do love that one, I really do. Uh, and I also want to be um, using these for my um, 
some jelly plate textures I want to do for landscapes. That green next to it. And also, oh, that green. Oh, that does look rather good. And if I, oh, let's peel a bit off. I know I've got this particular pink in my um, sketch kit. Okay, and let's put a bit of ochre down. Oh, you know what I've got, also got to do? Let's, I need to get my coloured pencils out. I'll see how they behave. Oh, <laughs> I got, I need to swatch so much stuff. This is the first time that I've swatched out what I'm going to be taking to Vietnam and it's really great practice for a few reasons because it allows you to accurately see the true colours of your materials rather than relying on what's on the packaging or the wrapper and by creating swatches you can ensure better consistency throughout your art and avoid any unexpected surprises once you reach your destination. And also swatching like this I think encourages artists, well it encourages me to explore and keep experimenting with materials. I love testing out different mediums and see how they interact with each other and on various surfaces the different effects and the combinations and things that I might not have considered. And also this is a great reference tool for me once I get out there and it allows me to reference this if I need to. This is the moment you have been waiting for. <laughs> What's inside my sketching kit? Oh, by the way, this bag is from Uniqlo. I got one of these um, last year. The sketchbook that I'm currently using is a Hannah Muller tone sketchbook. I've only started filling it. Um, I started last year but um, this is done this year and I've got my textured pages ready uh, if you saw my previous YouTube video which I can link um, I got that ready and also I have some neo colors in there I'll show you that properly in a minute and whoops and the last bits it's a bulldog clip and a gelato. So I'm going to quickly go through this with you. This does not weigh very much. Uh, bearing in mind, you know, I might be stopping at a cafe. I might be walking for an hour, probably more like 40 minutes. But everything is so handy to have in this bag. I have two coloured pencils. Normally they are pretty dark. On the value scale uh, this one is sepia and this one is french gray you can see i use them a lot i've got a, a green eco line brush and uh, this is a curateke marker and the reason i love these is they're double-ended one uh, has got a point like that and the other one has a point like this and i usually use this end the most uh, this is a white acrylic pen you can sometimes it would be a Posca pen in there it's just the one that I grabbed for the other day and I'll have some other random colors uh, blue and purple woody and this is a Holbein colored pencil which color is it scarlet uh, this is a olive green pentel brush pen and th this gelato is at nougat which is kind of a beige and in my little tin are a few little pieces of um, neo color too now the trick with packing is to have a selection i think the trick is to have a selection of dark values like these pencils uh, that is a dark value, this is a dark value, and you've got some mid-ranges, so I would call that mid-range. This is kind of in between, this is getting lighter, and hold on, if I get these out, 
um, that's on the light side. <laughs> Look at how small that pencil is. Goodness me, I don't know if I can keep sharpening that one. Uh, that was the um, Carmine Lake, which I absolutely adore. That's probably mid-range, light, light. Oh, look, there's another one. It's, it's another pencil that I adore using. It's um, dark fallow green. And mm, mid, mid to dark, that, I think, that one. And that's probably, even though it's grey, it's probably mid to light. And this one is dark. And the best thing to do is to squint. That's probably over there. This one is probably, it's brown, but it's mid value. And these are probably light values here. No, maybe the orange is more there. And then this one probably about there and this green uh, it's it's on it's a yeah maybe there and this beige is definitely kind of oh actually I don't know if that's the same color but that's how I do it I have dark values mid values and light values and I have a white this is actually a bit larger a larger set than I normally take out it really serves my purpose well I want to add, since I was going out daily with my sketchbook, I would change up the pens and the pencils every few days. So I would have a different dark grey or dark green and then perhaps a pastel pink. This is a Hannah Muller sketchbook and I'm not going to show you the whole thing but I wanted to tell you more about my reasoning for having a dark value, light value and also um, mid ranges. So this is quite early on and I was still quite trying to find my feet. But you can see in the background, I used a gelato there and that's a light value. And this is uh, one of the green, light green curatekes. And so they're light and mid is probably this, the brown of these trees and the dark value is the, it's this color pencil, probably paints gray and the same again and you can see I have used uh, you know lilac purple here and it doesn't really matter about the color it's about the values if you squint your eyes or if I was to turn this into a black and white photo you'll see that um, the trees are the darkest this orangey color in the background is a light value as well as the, the white paper and the lilac is a mid-range and uh, pretty much the same again here if you squint the background here is the darkest the trees are the darkest uh, a slightly different purple but layering a, a dark green on top of that produces a very dark value and um, you can use the dark colors to um, emphasize uh, certain shapes like this uh, the house next to the canal um, uh, this one again, um, I, I've used a little bit of white Posca in the label here and I will do a complete full uh, sketchbook tour of this one and probably um, this other one once I've finished and, and you can see a bit more about um, how I use a very limited uh, materials and palette to create images like this. I almost forgot because I will be using my small watercolour set while I'm out there on location I will also need um, one of these collapsible water containers and I'll and I will be using this uh, Jackson's the it says three forward slash zero I'm going to be on a plane for 13 hours so this is going to occupy part of my time there also, um, I always pick up little serviettes like that that they give away. Just pop that in there. And um, this will fit in very nicely in the little compartment in front of my seat, I expect. <laughs> 